why don't you grab a coffee and sit down with me for 10 to 15 minutes and I'll show you a solution to a problem that's been bugging me for ages. So I'm going to show you how to take an item that's landed in your inbox that requires you to action and remove cut and paste, remove saving attachments and storing them somewhere and instead from an email directly create a planner task but better than that create a planner task with key information in it and the attachment from the email. You may say to yourself, well, what about a plugin in Outlook to do this? Well, they are there, there's loads of them, but dig into the privacy and security and see if you're happy with it. I'm not. What I wanna do is keep control of my data in my tenants and not send it anywhere else for it to do the job. So what I ended up looking into is a solution which involves Outlook. It involves an Outlook folder. It involves a Power Automate flow triggered from a new item dropping into that folder. And then in the Power Automate flow that I'm going to show you, what it ends up doing is it takes all the data from the email and all of the simple data, like the subject, the person who sent it to you, is readily available to introduce and inject using the planner actions in Microsoft Planner. The one thing that isn't is the attachment. That just does not exist in any of the current versions of Power Automate planner actions so i'll show you the workaround for that it does involve one compromise it involves you storing that attachment from that email somewhere now i've chosen a sharepoint library and the reason for that is because i can permission that library so it's mine the one implication of doing this save and using that in the planner task is that you have to keep that item there in that SharePoint library for the duration of the planner task. Because if you want to click the planner task, as I'll show you, the item needs to exist in SharePoint. That'll all make sense when I show you the solution. So part one is as simple as you've got an email, you want to do something with it, that's fantastic. It's got an attachment, it's got some information on it. Um, you just create, using right click, create new subfolder, just create a new subfolder, call it what you like, I've called it Plan Me. You're going to use that as your trigger for your Power Automate flow. So what's gonna happen as an end user, the only action you need to take is to click on that email and drag it into Plan Me. That's all you need to do. So how's the Power Automate flow set up? Let me just show you what that looks like. So first of all, you want an automated cloud flow. I'm gonna skip this for speed and I'm gonna show you the trigger that I select. So it's in the Office 365 group. So click See More, just so you can see them all and it's when a new email arrives. Pretty common one, pretty popular. The important thing here is you set it up correctly. So let's show all the parameters. First of all, set it up just to be emails that come to you, perhaps. You might want to have other filters on. Make sure you set the attachments to yes, because that's the use case we're looking into here. I'm not going to worry about subject filters, but you could put that, but also only with attachments. And then the important piece here is whatever you name that folder when you set it up, make sure you select that folder. That's the most important thing of this whole process is you're hooking into the right folder. So here it's called Plan Me. You see it's written it down there. Next up, we now know that when an email drops into that folder, as a result of this, the email data is going to be stored. But the one bit I know we have a problem with that I'm going to help you is with the attachments. So I'm going to do something specifically around attachments as my action first and foremost. Because the fact that I might have multiple attachments, the first action I'm going to add is an apply to each. So that's really important just to put that safeguard in to protect that it might be more than one attachment. Okay, so what's going to happen is when an email comes in, the data is in memory for that email for each attachment on that email. So let's first of all hook into the um, attachments from the email. I want to do something. Okay. So what I want to do is there are two different types of attachments on an email. There might be an image which is in line, so like a footer or a picture or something like that, or a genuine attachment, as you saw in the folder there where you've got the little paper clip. That's what I want to hook into, and that's probably the more common use case for this, pro for this solution. So the next thing I want to do is just test. This is not original. This is uh, taken from Matt Devani, who showed us on a blog post. He's very good if you want to look into Power Apps and Power Automate, somebody I follow a lot. But I'm going to introduce it into my solution because it's really helped me. So I'm going to test that this particular attachment is a genuine attachment. So to do that, I add a condition. 
And what's the condition going to key on? Well, let's just get rid of Copilot there. It's not very helpful to me right now. Controversial, I know. Um, so it's going to key on something, a property of the email. So this is this is all the data that's been captured by the trigger. There's 27 items. Go and have a look at the items. They're super useful. And not a lot of people do click the see more there, but that's really helpful. Click it, and somewhere down near the bottom, you will see an indicator, if I can find it. Here we go. Attachments is in line. That is the one that you want to look at. And if it is equal to true, um, I'm just going to write the word true here. It's a bit funny in the new interface. In the old interface, you used to get like um, the purple expression. So if it's equal to true, then do this leg. I don't want to do anything if it's just a picture in an email. I want to do something if it's that lovely little paper clip. So it's this leg that I want to exercise. So add an action, add, add an action even. Too many actions and attachments. So the action I want to do is to actually go and get the attachment. So I'm going to type in get attachment. So I now know it's the legitimate attachment I want. It's one of many potentially, but I've gone and got the attachment. Well, which attachment do I want? So let's choose the dynamic content. We want the attachment ID. Again, you're going to need to click into the see more. We want the attachment ID. So the specific reference to that attachment. Sorry, my mistake. We want the message ID. So uh, the attachment is in a message. Which message is it in? Well, it's in that one. What's the attachment ID? Well, that will be the specific one. So we do that the right way around and it does help. Attachment ID. There you go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create a file in a document library which is associated to that attachment. So just to show you that, this is just a document library in a team site. It's dead easy to create a document library. I'll just go and show you now. So it's a new document library. Make sure you've done that, otherwise this won't work. The reason I've chosen document library, not OneDrive, is because this is um, nice and easy for me to access. I can access it through Teams. I can permission it to just one member, which is me. I can have multiple members, so I can add this for all members of my team, and this solution will work. I've just put three columns in here to gather three bits of data about each attachment. It could be loads of data. This is the data you're going to use effectively to create a planner task. So you make a choice, and through the course of your flow, you can extract different bits of information like dates and whatnot. But I've got the name of the document, who's it from, and what's the subject. That's good enough for me to show this. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a file. So, so you have to have that SharePoint library set up, OK, uh, that document library. Otherwise, this next bit won't work. So create a, uh, let's go to SharePoint and choose create a file. That's the one we want. Where do you want to create it? Well, as I've just shown you, it's in a SharePoint library. So I think mine was called Team Site. I think it was. And what's the folder path? Let's just check the folder for the document libraries. It was called something like uh, Emails Incoming. There we go. So it's my Emails Incoming folder. There you go. It's that one. Uh, right, next, the file name. So what we want to do is we want to get the name of, so when we do the get attachment, again, it's exposed more information to us. So let's just take the name of the attachment. File content, this is important. This is, um, it's gonna, you're going to select content bytes. What that means is get all of the data that's in that attachment that we've just grabbed and introduce it as a item in a document library. That's all you need to do. You can then do things like, and I may as well just show you this now, you can update the file properties. What that means is you'll be updating the information in the columns in that document library. So let's just show you what that does. And I'll, I'll call that out as we go through the testing. Update file properties. So again, choose the site. Right, so what's the ID of the item? Um, yeah, have a test, pause the video, see if you can figure out which dynamic content to choose. But these are your options, okay? So for those of you who didn't pause, it's we've created a file, we've got a file ID. So it's the item ID from that create file action. That's all you put in there. Let's have a look at the other parameters that we might add. These are the columns in my SharePoint document library, and that's why I'm doing this, because I kind of quite like to update the title. So let's just give that... Um, let's give it the name of the attachment. 
let's uh what else should we add i mean i don't really need to do the title but let's just put the person that sent it uh so that comes from from the trigger itself so let's just do that and let's get the subject again from the trigger itself so that's down here there we go I mean, you could go a bit mad. You could actually take information from the source email. So um, if you were looking at the source email, you could probably take the body. You could do a text search for an, a date or an email or something like that. And you could stick information into different columns. But I haven't done that for this particular example. So that's the first bit. Let me just save that. And why don't we just give that a test? And it's going to sit there and wait for us to go and do that trigger. I've just moved it to the plan me folder. There we go. That should trigger that action. It's a newly arrived email in the plan me folder. Let's just minimize that and watch this go to work very shortly. So we see it running here. I've been sat here for a, a few minutes in the background. Um, one thing I would say is just test it with a freshly sent email. Just seems to trigger better that way. So you can see it's in process now. It's run successfully, uh, so it's gone through that whole process. It's got the attachment, create the file, update the properties. Let's go and have a look. So I'll do a quick refresh. There you go. So this is what that attachment looks like. Um, you can see it's PDF. If I click it, it'll open it, which is all great. Fantastic. Um, it's there. So that's step one done. Subject didn't add in, but you could diagnose and fix that later. That's just a, um, a piece of data challenge. Now, the last little bit, we need to go and add in is we need to go and add in the planner tasks. So it's really simple. There's two actions that you're going to need here. You're going to create the task and then you'll update the task. The reason for the update is because that's where you're going to add the attachment. So create a task is ever so easy. It's a routine planner action. Create a task. It'll ask you what board. So again, back to your original, you need to have the board ready so you can attach to it. So let's just choose that particular one. It's in Cloud 365 for me. It's called Sprints. I've got loads of planner tasks. We're so bad. Right, and then um, what's the title of the new task? So I'm going to choose the title from the email that came in. So when a new email arrives, let's just choose the subject of the message. Again, assuming I've got that subject in my test data, that could be a problem. Um, and then you can add some stuff in. So where do you want to add it? I want to add it to the to-do bucket. So to do, uh, you could add start dates, you could pull dates off emails that have come in and you could put those in. You could assign user IDs, so I may as well just do this so you can see it's me. Use my email address, you can use different bits of data if you want, but it doesn't matter. So there you go. Uh, you can give it some colours. This is the limitation of the planner actions right now. That's it, that's all you get. You've got priority at the bottom there. It's not great, is it? But never mind, because we can get around that limitation. So that's set up, it'll create a task. Next, we want to update a task. It annoys me a bit that the planner actions are a bit limited. So here we go. We've not got so many in there. So update a task. The, yes, important. Mustn't forget this. Don't choose these. Update task details gives you specific actions that you can, um, specific access to the piece that we want. So the task ID, well, I've just created a task. So it's going to give you all of these. Ignore all of that good stuff. Go down to the bottom, enter custom value. Don't know why it does that, but it does that anyway. Create a task has given me, again, see more, an ID, if I can find it. There we go. Description of the task, I don't want to touch that. Show all. Here you go. Here's the, here's the little magic uh, source. So in the alias, you've got to be a bit careful about the pieces of data you choose here. And it took a bit of thought for me to figure this one out. But when I update the file properties, I get a bunch of information about that file and it's that that I want to use here. So um, what I want to do is I want to take the file name from the file properties. I've got to find it. It's somewhere down here. Uh, let's choose file name with extension. It's just a visible reference on the planner. The important thing is you need the link to the resource. This is why I said at the very beginning, if you use this solution, you're going to link to an item in SharePoint. If you then go and delete that item in SharePoint to tidy up for security or whatever, your planner task won't have the attachment link. But what you want to do is you want to choose, again, when you update the file properties, there will be a link to that particular item. Now, let's just show you what this looks like. 
link to item. So, yeah, you can put types of reference, but you don't need to. Now, experiment with this. What I ended up doing, and I'm just going to show you this, there is, a, you can look at the JSON which underlies the, uh, the code, actually, which is actually quite a nice way to do it. So that should do the job for you. So we know the first bit's going to work. It's going to add to Planner. So I'm just going to, rather than have to go through the process of sending an email, I'll just use the same data that was passed through a minute ago. It's quite quick, as you see there. The last little bit, I'm hoping we will see, if I click Refresh on Planner, a Planner task. And there you go. That's what it should look like. So we've got the subject. It's, uh, it's put it in the title there. It's assigned it to me. This is the experience that I'm getting. So it's effectively a link as an attachment. Click it. Boom. There's my attachment opens up. So that solves that problem. So there's a few hops, a few compromises, but I hope it solves a problem for you. And I hope it saves you copy pasting from emails into planner tasks. So if you like that, do like and subscribe and join me again next time for something you can fit into a coffee break. See you soon. Bye.